Welcome everyone to the Onward VR Master League. I'm your host, Menorkit, and I'm joined today by my co-caster, Kesney. Hi everybody, thanks for having me today. Hey Kesney, we're excited to be bringing you this Hell From Above versus Cold Steel matchup, Season 11, Week 7. So let's just jump straight into the bands. What do we got today, Kesney? We've got two bands going on today. First of all, it's going to be coming in from the Hell From Above side. They're going to be banning Bizarre. Okay. And then from the other side, Cold Steel, we're going to be seeing a, a bit of a different ban from them. They're going to be banning out Snow Peak. Some interesting bands there. Do you have uh, any thoughts on those? So there's a couple of things that come to mind. You know, it's really, I mean, Hell From Above is a, is a new team to VRML. Um, and kind of as they're going along, I'm, excuse me, I think I, no, I have that right. Um, something that they've been doing a lot of, and it's actually... From the Cold Steel side, I, I think it's a very smart band for them because they've played eight games so far in the season, Cold Steel has, and out of those eight games, at least one of their maps on those three game series has been specifically Bizarre Night, with one of those choices being Bizarre Day. Um, Bizarre Night being a very odd choice and unique to Cold Steel's selection, it takes that quiver out. I actually think that's a very intelligent band. It shows that Hell From Above really did their homework on Cold Steel. Um, now, from the flip side, the Cold Steel side, um, last season, we actually, Snow Peak was not in there. So uh, Cold Steel's been around for a number of years now. They're a very seasoned team. Uh, you know, Snow Peak's one of those maps, you either you love it or you hate it, as it's just, it's so big, it's so spread out. It's a lot like, say, a downfall, if you will. Um, and if you aren't prepared for it, prepared to the teeth, it's one of those ones that you'll get you'll end up getting rolled over you'll do something silly like send five people across the lake and um hells from above has played on snow peak and they have i believe a couple matches on snow peak so i think that was a great band by their perspective but it shows that they really probably want to stay away from that long drawn out uh strategic style map as well maybe a little more tactical what what is your thoughts on it i'd have to agree with you i think that your uh, commentary there was spot on uh Cold Steel is definitely a very formidable team on Bazaar. It's it's a map that they know and love. They've been playing for years, um, and they just do really well. On. They just work as a team. They push up, and when you throw in such a curveball like a night map, uh, a lot of teams are just they get messed up by that. They're not ready. Uh, so yeah. by banning that, they're just going to pull that out of the equation entirely. Uh, definitely a good move from uh, from them on hell, uh, hell from above. Uh, as far as Snow Peak's concerned, I. Yeah, it's just you you love it or you hate it. I can't say it any better than that because there's so many teams. It's either ban it or they play it. Uh, definitely a very cool map, uh, but we won't be seeing that today. But instead, for our first map, what do we got, Kesney? So right out the gate, we're going to be going with one of, uh, I think it's actually one of your favorites, Mono. It's going to be Subway as oh the initial map. <laughs> got it. I, I can't use the slogan here, but it's, you know, it's a... It's a fantastic map. You love Subway, don't you, Mono? This is a great map. Uh, you get a lot of tactical gameplay. You get a lot of teamwork. Uh, very good map for those flankers. Uh, late game rotations. You got some really, uh, you know, tight head-on fights, and you also got some varied uh, fights, like in the second level, uh, that players can really just, of all strengths, can really dominate. The only kind of missing area I'd say is the the long range. There's not too much of that, um, but you know sometimes you just want to get into a bit of a, a scruff in uh, CQB. That's right. You gotta you gotta tackle those corners. I think there are a few long range shots, but it's not like a like a downfall or a snow peak or long range. I mean, but if you get like into a scuff down at there's a three stories on subway in the bottom one, there's a really long hallway you can defend from, and that can be a bit of a long shot. But I think you're a hundred percent right. The only one that's not really represented there is is that tactical, we'll say sniping, if you will. That yeah, some, you want to you want to take a scope, for. really? No, not the real 12x one for sure. <laughs> it might be just a little bit on the far side. I, I would have to agree, but there, there's a couple of those shots, and they they can happen, and it's pretty interesting when you do see that. But I'd argue with the addition of these kind of newer objectives uh, that we've seen, or well, the new one up on the top side, uh, which kind of brings a bit, a bit more balance 
uh, to the map where most of the objectives were down below uh, on the second level, on the first level. Uh, but now we have this one on the middle street, um, which really kind of changes things. And there's really no long range on that fight whatsoever. Most defenses stay pretty condensed on the objective. They might do a little bit of a push out down the streets, but they're never really going downstairs. They're never really going to those long hallways. They just keep it in close and everyone's just fighting for their lives. It's a pretty accurate way. When, I mean, C4 as a result in those tight corners becomes brutal too. Oh, You're so gonna brutal. narrow down. Oh yeah, because you narrow them all down into these little corridors which you can kind of creep and crawl around and you can hear from. And some of the new objectives especially have some really tight corridors. It makes some interesting opportunities for the C4 to do some serious damage into you know, the little two, three splits or even, even worse if you end up with the whole squad there. Yeah, it's just seen some really uh, awe-inspiring C4s, some C2s, C3s. Uh, often people will call them that when they get two kills or three kills, respectively. Uh, and it's just, it's brutal. When you get hit by those C4s, your entire flank is down because people were just a tad too close. And let's, let's face it, the C4 explosion radius is very large. you got to really worry about that when you're doing any kind of push on a map like Subway. Exactly right, 100%. And I think it's something that would be interesting to see here too, kind of going with, say, a, uh, a more established team throughout the league's history versus the new teams. We're seeing some new evolving meta strategies that are entering into play, kind of maybe some more shock and awe, if you will, to go along with everything. So it'd be interesting to see what some of the uh, we'll say younger teams that are coming into the league are generating some really interesting tactics and especially on the newer objectives where they're not fully fleshed out yet as well. Yeah, there's uh, been several of those more veteran teams getting spanked on those new objectives, really having to uh, come up with something new and they can't just play their old game on those anymore. They got to really get the, uh, the tactics out there and, and uh, hone them up, learn something new. Uh, it's always a struggle when you see the, the Titans go against the, the newbies and, and what they can do and what they can really surprise you with. So we're going to see what happens in this game today. Uh, it should be a really good one here. We're going to jump into a quick intermission, though, until these two teams are ready, just waiting on the one player. And when they do join in, we'll be jumping straight into the action. So do stay tuned. Uh, we'll be with you shortly.
Welcome back, everyone. We're about to get started here. Round one just started here. Hell from above attacking. We got two Move players watching North Alley here going quite cautiously here. here. They're not going to rush forward here. They're going to let the defense use their utility. They're going to let the defense wonder where this attack is going to come from and maybe put a bit more of an emphasis on attack in the south. Two players as we speak. Going into the south right now, one in the tunnels there, just slowly moving forward. One making his way all the way south, get a line across. And the rest of these players going a very slow, cautious push down North Alley. Uh, it's actually probably to their credit. I mean, it's very dangerous. They get up there to the top of that alley. And when they get there, they would be greeted by a C4 on the corner. So from the flip side, Cold Steel has put together um, a pretty strong you know, kind of north objective protection, if you will, with that C4, that's gonna be out of what would be a normal frag grenade range there, um, just in front of the trash can. So it'll be interesting to see if they come around that corner, they're gonna be introduced to a pop really quickly. I'm pretty sure Austin has got good vision on down. that. Good shot there. Do so, Doctor shoots some uh, guns in the air and uh, the anger there, pulls back, maybe hmm. get them to use some of their utility. Uh, at the same time, a uh, good frag right now from the defenders would be very devastating, would explode that C4. And we see oh. some utility thrown, but just a little bit off there. Jerk Don't coming up to engage the player. Comes up one down and two, but not before going down himself. Another frag coming out from the doctor there. Again, a little bit close there. Dale coming around the corner, though, able to get that confirm. And uh, gets a double there. Uh, unfortunate for the defenders from Cold Steel there, but at the same time, help from above still down quite a few players there. That's a clutch move from Dalish, moving around the corner whenever he did. The timing just worked out perfectly. It's that uh, age-old onward tradition. When you look away or you're doing something different than looking where they're coming from, that's the moment <laughs> they'll strike around that corner. <laughs> it's so true, isn't it? That's <laughs> And it looks like we may have had, did we have a friendly down that happened in the south as they're pushing in now? You got shot and frame moving up. Nyx Dragon's actually sitting on the south side on the, what we'll say, the, the U or whatever, the horseshoe. And one of them approaches the corner and it, it causes really shot and frame to have to fall back because he just falls right into Nyx's trap right on that corner. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, Nyx uh, pulled his toll out. He got a kill there, able to force that rotation, but able to get away. Will still be able to assist with this approach as Dalish starts his uh, slow approach prone down the north stairs. Smoke is uh, in play as well. Will cause a little bit of distraction, but it did just run out, which will be an issue here. And Shrieky Geek goes down. Nyx goes down to shot as well. They're in a good position to go for this cap right now. There's only one Cold Steel Defender left. He has to rush forward towards objective, able to grab shot and frame. Dalish coming around the corner, the corner here. Corner. He's got his tablet out. He's ready to get this out, but he drops it. Hearing the movement from Shot Stubbler, able to get that one. Help from above. Take the first round. Wow. That was uh, a great rush in from Cold Steel to fall back to that objective and try to defend it quickly. I mean, had he been maybe a half a second later, that could have very easily turned into a cap. But really great, you know, sense of awareness from Dalish, not to try to put his tablet away, not to do anything, just drop it and go immediately for his gun and get trained up on that corner uh, and get ready to fire. I have to agree with you there. He knew that he was just around the corner. He knew he didn't have time to necessarily get that cap off. He had to choose between that much more, not, not guaranteed, but a much more likely uh, you know, win with a kill on a player that's going to be rushing around the corner with no, uh, you know, care for their life. Or are you going to try and get that cap off before they come around the corner and you yourself, uh, you know, preferably have your pants down uh, with your hands on your tablet? That's right. Absolutely. And I, I think it was, it was, you know, the you getting one point versus giving them a point. You know, two points would have been nice in that scenario, but I think he made the right choice, especially given the fit of the timing and how much time he had left to go around. I definitely have to agree with you there. Uh, good round from both sides. Uh, a lot of good movement, uh, good tactics there. Very uh, messy fight on the north stair there. Uh, you know, held from above coming out just ahead on that one, and that's what you always have to worry about. 
uh, when the attacking team gets a good foothold in the north alley, it's very dangerous for the defending team. Uh, not much you can do about it as you still do have to worry about that south side. So uh, good movement from both teams. And we're going to just have to see how this one shakes out in the second round of subway on North Stair. Here we go. It will be interesting to see as they're coming along and Dalish is leading the charge up that north staircase here to get up on top and he came away with four kills the last round looks like he may have placed a c4 high on the staircase so um it would be have to be well down in line to be engaged i lost geek i got a refrag what a quick engagement in the horseshoe before four before uh two well two players going down in total it's uh evened up into a 4v4 what a quick movement uh from the defenders really aggressive to push up into that uh horseshoe and try and catch them out it was very aggressive pushed out and they've almost completely given up north stairs i mean it's really the actions come down here to where we're watching underneath in the subway and pushing in from the south this one pulls out we got shots firing out cold steel in control of the north there but not really pushing up they're just looking for those kind of flankers there uh looks like a very planned defensive position let that uh push come in from the south let them get into position and then start that push as you see doctor and stubbler starting to make their push forward there uh ever so slightly as they stay crouched and defensive It's an interesting setup also from Hell. I mean, really, North Have Stair has exactly one individual it. guarding oh, no, it, and that's going off. to be Dalish. Um, there's not a ton of defense in the North Staircase, and everyone is committed to guarding that south area. You're kind of yeah, overlooking there, there. Yeah. Nix's shoulder. I mean, you can see most of the objective out there, and they're going to try to creep and crawl into the south. Oh. Nice pickup from Doc, getting a shot on the Jerp as he comes up those stairs. Powerful position to be in, but also very dangerous as you crest that hill. Meanwhile, up in the north, Doctor and Stubbler have pushed up. They are at the top of the stairs here. They are ready to come down the stairs whenever the rest of the team is ready. And Dalish is going to have a lot to deal with here. He is in a good position to do so, a very classic one. Also going, uh, looks like he's prone, so he's ready for any of these players coming down prone right, themselves. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Nick's pick, getting a pickup on Doc Nine. Now Doctor going in very, very aggressively. Dalish, though, able to get a pickup on him and Stubbler, punishing that quick movement from the attacking team. And now Nix is uh, suddenly left alone and having to deal with this much more numerically advantaged defending team in Hell from above with three players up. I mean, the rush in there, I thought that that was, that was, I was expecting a boom from the side. There was a C4 sitting up there somewhere, and I guess maybe they disabled it when we weren't watching. Um, but I expected a pop to come out there, and it does leave Nick Dragon having to battle his way across the staircase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Railway. Quickly drop prone, and he's in a tough position here. His position has been found out. The defenders know where he is. He got three minutes on the time, uh, on the clock, so he has plenty of time to make any kind of rotation if he so desires, but to get out of there isn't going to be uh, an easy feat in itself. No, I mean, he's really trapped there. I mean, he can't go to the left because uh, he'd come up the ramp. Going to the right, I mean, I think Wookie still has, you know, Wookie Oreo still has a line on him all the way out there, so he can't move without being seen and being reported in. Not in a bad place, though. As long as he doesn't get flanked, he might be able to get a pick on Wookie if these keep happening just narrow miss there as wookie uh, popped out trying to get that uh, cheeky peek uh and all he has to really do is just stay put stay hit it force nix to come to him fight them on the, the turntable there but that said with that gp out a lot of bullets uh, in the bow there in the mag he will get that pick just as he runs into his own fire it was, uh, it was a rough move, but he had to move forward. His time was coming down. I mean, he only really had a couple minutes left. Dalish still with a commanding lead on the scoreboard at six kills for the first two rounds collected. I bet Dalish likes this map. <laughs> at least he's having a good map, it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that does bring it up to 2-0, and oh, Hell from Above. So their, you know, their first map pick here at this point really kind of working out to their advantage it looks like a well-rehearsed you know with the north stair push 
Um, and you know, Dalish able to really hold that north stairwell solo. Uh, it's really uh, an impressive two rounds put up from Hell Above. Um, what are your thoughts here, I guess, coming in now as Cold Steel having to kind of flip the tables? What is it that you're, you know, what would you do differently in Cold, she cold Steel Shoes? Uh, I overall, uh, just going off of one round uh, on each side, though, so not much to go off there. Uh, Cold Steel's defenses have been pretty good. Uh, they've been a little bit more aggressive there with one kind of flanking defensive player. Definitely could have worked out in their favor, and it almost did. Um, so I wouldn't really change too much here. Uh, this is kind of an interesting objective uh, in that the defense has a lot of options as well. The attackers really have to deal with a lot of spots the defenders could be. Um, so we could see several different strategies work really, really well. Well, the north uh, objective is quite linear compared to most uh, onward objectives. Uh, but Hell from Above, though, is just... It's, it's tough because they've just been playing so well together. They, they have these timed attacks. Uh, they're just working really well and coordinated and attacking on different fronts. Uh, I think just honestly, the, the fatal flaw there is Cold Steel just got a little bit aggressive pushing down those north stairs. They were so eager to get down. And while they did dodge the C4, it's really hard to deal with a player that's sitting prone at the bottom of the stairs. Um, but, you know, it happens. Great. And I think it'll be interesting. They won't be able to be as aggressive on the counter push either or on a flank position like they did. So this actually may play out to Cold Steel for this particular round. Absolutely. Jumping on Doc 9 here as he pushes up the tunnel area here. Doctor, this right above him. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting one where players can be so close, but at the same time so far away, being on different levels of the map at the same time. Uh, and just having to deal with the audio uh, issues of them being able to hear you. And you can already see Doc here going a bit slower and trying to uh, stay hidden from anybody that might be hearing him. Ooh, but just Ooh. like that, she's been able to get two C4 kills and the confirm on the uh, horseshoe. Uh, it's an excellent pickup for Cold Steel was Shrieky was waiting for him just patiently sitting around the corner there that came down and uh getting back to that c4 just being devastating in some of the narrow tunnels it's just come true again here we uh we talked about c4 and uh <laughs> it came true it does look like they've successfully made it down the south stairs dalish and awesome bob having a view over the objective here um, and going to start making a play into the objective here. Maybe they're trying to sync up that timing with Doc, who's headed still underneath and kind of crawling through the tunnels as they're holding. Definitely a tough one. This is kind of one of those uh, breakpoints. You make it down the stairs, you've dealt with that, but now you have all this open area, and it might as well just be a kill zone. You got all these uh, you know side tunnels that players can be in and often are, as we see Doctor... Uh, all the way down the tunnel over there and we got jerp and stubble down their own individual tunnels there uh and while there are options you can go through the train you can go through uh the underground tunnels whatever way you go you're gonna have to deal with quite a lot that said some uh, excellent utility use from dalish able to get stubbler's position uh called out basically just by forcing him to fire his weapon we'll have to see if there's any kind of uh rotation onto his shop stairs. That looks like Awesome Bob is trying to sneak up. Dalish, meanwhile, though, making a push forward there. A little bit short on that uh, smoke, but gets it across and towards the objective. Will be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, Dalish drew out the initial shot there, but he's got to deal with Doctor, so he really can't get behind that train. Um, and Awesome that has to move on in. Doc able to get that pickup on the jerk and just narrowly escaping with his life down the stairs there. Ooh, a frag coming around the corner though, right on the, doc the, doc the doctor's position. Okay, able to get it down on him right. and opening up a, a spot for Dalish to push uh, forward towards objective. Shrieking forced to push forward and trying to defend this. Ne uh, nearly getting his head taken off for the, uh, for the uh, effort there. Awesome Bob able to get the pickup on the stubbler, hey, giving Dalish that opening he, he needs to side. face a Shrieking Geek. Shrieking has to come out too. I mean, he's last. Side. I think he's last standing. Yeah. Oof. This bit. 
fantastic. So I, I think the part of that play there that struck me the most, so they moved on through, and this is kind of uh, two, and this is going to be to Dalish's credit, and Dalish has had a heck of a round, but Dalish actually called for the grenade throw. And the grenade that went in there was a great throw. It went right into the cavern, and he couldn't really run anywhere at that point because he wasn't going to be able to outrun the grenade. But the but Dalish made the call and told him exactly where the individual was. I think Doth9 made the throw, which ultimately brought the down, and it forced Shrieking Geek to come out and have to start approaching the objective because there was only one left, and they could have come from a number of different ways. Um, my hat's off, really, to Hells from Above. I feel like they, they did that part very, very well and executed that attack and crossed the chasmous abyss into that lower area and got into a position where they could be threatening. Definitely, man. That grenade was a beautiful sight to see. Uh, and love to see that kind of teamwork play, the, hey, I need you here and getting that, uh, you know, those angels from above in the form of a green grenade. <laughs> It always sucks when it lands at your feet, but whenever you're the one to throw it, you know, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, when I throw it, it doesn't really go anywhere I want it to. But I, I just run the other way. That's a, that's a <laughs> <yeah>. scary day. <laughs> <laughs> when those grenades come in clutch, they come in good. Really open up those uh, approaches that you no normally wouldn't have had uh, by being able to put that fire or... Uh, you know, force multiplier uh, in a spot that normally would be protected from you. So when you see those players exploiting those tools uh, available to them, it really, really can work out for you and give you that win when normally uh, it would have been a much tougher fight. Yeah, that comboed up with that C4, I think it'd be great to see how Cold Steel reacts here now with uh, like being faced confident. in a 3 0 scenario. You look a little confident little bant uh, friendly banter coming on from cold steel here everybody is cool and collected a lot on the line here uh as you said if hell from above take another point they will take this first map but they know that uh that even that said they need to play to the best of their abilities they need to not psych themselves out from any uh kind of play that hell from above has been doing and you can come back from a zero three situation it's happened before and we might That's just see it here. It's happened even recently. Now, it'll be interesting. The Shrieking Geek's going to come up this tunnel here, and he's going to square off with Awesome Bob. Um, now, within this, it, it's really going to be... Um, he's going to deal with a similar scenario, though the C4 is in a very different spot. So it's actually up here on top of the sign this time around. But Shrieking Geek is also going to have to deal with that same funnel that he trapped them in last round. He gets to deal with now from an attacking perspective. Really interesting to see here what happens with that. Ooh, Stubbler going down at the corner of my vision there, Jerp. Also at the same time, uh, Cold Steel down to three. This is a tough one too. You at this point, you're kind of committed. You get past that uh, sign, you you got to commit and worry about anybody popping out. Uh, you know, and Awesome Bob Nick's running out there making some noise. Awesome Bob, not quite ready to go to C4, ah. able to get just barely. Nick, <laughs> oh man, that, that was so long. Uh, I can't <laughs> oh, that sigh from him. He's like, ah, oh, you get me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was good. Shrieking Geek, though, able to get that refrag and open up this uh, this entrance for him to move forward towards the objective. But down to two, four Me. defenders left. It's going to be a tall order for Cold Steel to come back from this one. But the Doctor in a good position to support, uh, or really to be supported uh, by Geek. And if they work together here, they could get some good picks. They could create a lot of pressure. They just have to worry uh, in the lurk that we see shot in frame as he moves up and around trying to catch anybody from behind. Would be an interesting thing for him to catch up. It looks like he is going over the overpass right now, but he could come up behind Shrieking Geek. And that could, I mean, taking out that last individual, coming in from that north without the support of the, the north stairs that Shrieking's overwatching um, would, be, would be devastating to Doctor trying to cross that. And once Shrieking starts firing, he's going to give his position away. Wookie getting a pickup on the Doctor, ganking Shrieking, the last member left, pushing forward here. And Wookie 
uh, Oreo might actually catch Shrieking as he comes down the stairs here. He's definitely in a position that could see it, and shots ring out. Not quite picking up Shrieking, but that should give Sean Frame the information he needs to know that Shrieking is nearby. He is uh, around, and he will get picked up by Wookiee before Shot can quite make his flank all the way around in position. Help from flanking. above, though. 4-0, uh, commanding first uh, lead on the first map, but maybe it just wasn't Cold Steel's uh, map today. They're going to be getting to pick the next one here, uh, switching off uh, between these two teams. Help from above being the home team will be able to pick two uh, in the end, uh, map one and three, while Cold Steel being the way team will be able to pick map two. Uh, completely randomly generated, uh, but, you know, they're going to play a map that they're a bit more versed on. They a bit they like a little bit better and has that uh, that curveball as we saw there <laughs> during the uh, loading screen. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see um, how Cold Steel and this was kind of interesting going back to their bands and how Hell from Above banned Cold Steel's nighttime map, but they do have another nighttime map, and so it's actually uh, it looks like they're going to move into. It's a, it's a nighttime suburbia, which we don't actually see a whole ton. So it'll be interesting to see how their strategies play out. And clearly they're, they're training with that kind of nighttime mentality being something that's less used, less frequent, even though uh, the maps are the same. I mean, if you can't see them, it does add a bit of challenge to that map. And this is kind of a thing that you can practice around. You can get used to the lower visibility you can get used to the fov of the night vision goggles or in some cases even playing without any night vision at all there's choices uh and tactics and, and limitations that teams that don't play night maps often aren't going to be ready for i mean if you're used to having that frag and now suddenly you have to choose between taking that frag or take night vision it's going to be a tough one and when you depend on that uh you know that grenade to get you that kill, to create that opening, it's going to be brutal. You know, there's like uh, the center house objective, for example. I mean, that utility is key. And without it, uh, you're going to have to change your plans and you might just not be ready for it. I absolutely agree. It'll be interesting to see how they come along here. Um, the first objective we're going to have, it looks like, is the burning house objective, which even in the nighttime map looks so much different. Uh, it what looks it sweet. does in the daytime. This is what it looks like. <laughs> All of those fun graphics that we work on for so many hours. It, yeah, it looks it looks really beautiful. I really like the lighting effects from it. But uh, no time for that, as we are about to get started here. These teams are rolling out. No pre-fire yet. These teams both choosing to not do any kind of pre-fire. Everyone will be able to get in position here uh, as they roll up. Cold Steel taking quite a long line across the map, just forming a battle line, trying to catch any picks, catch any of those quick flankers, but Hell From Above aren't going to take the bait. They are just getting in position. They all are facing their uh, required angles, and uh, we're just going to have to see how this one shakes out. taking their time here on attack too they're just kind of setting up a line i guess watching for someone to come in and flank from that back alley or that back perspective um fortunately i think for both teams we're seeing a high level of discipline uh, and just holding their angles really using the six minutes to their object uh, to their advantage yeah we're going to have to see how it plays out here one of the teams is going to have to make a move and that team will be cold steel as the attackers, they do have to make the first move. They do have to go for the objective. The timer is not on their side. Uh, and Hell from Above just has to sit there and wait it out. Maybe if we sit here and we say Red Rover, Red Rover, send Cold Steel <laughs> right over. Do you think they'll run through? <laughs> <laughs> they just might. And uh, we're going to have to see when that plays out. We can already see some movement from Stubbler here. Just continue to watch his angle here, but it looks like he might be pushing forward here. The plan will have to move forward. And uh, you never know. I mean, just uh, keeping a team guessing might make them antsy, and when they get antsy, they might make some mistakes. It's definitely worked at all levels uh, of games in the VRML. 
But that said, smokes are coming out from Cold Steel. Uh, one green smoke coming right up into lane four, creating a bit of uh, obscuring cover or concealment for Cold Steel as they start their push up here. And all uh, gears are moving, and uh, the whole team is moving forward. Freaking Geek able to get a nice pickup. Uh, player in the center alley there, Dalish. Putting some shots on uh, down range towards Jerp, not quite able to get him, but making him pause. Good pickup from Jerp onto Dalish. Good shot too. He is prone, very hard to see, but able to do so. Doc nine and shot in frame now. Gonna have to deal with this uh Jerp as he continues coming around the corner there. Doc nine getting the uh the upper hand on that push up. Doc Nine though coming out a little bit too far. Somewhere able to get the double and he's on objective. He's got he's the without Cold Steel though. Win on kills. Oh man. There was a it was a friendly. Great job, good job, good job. That was two points because that was a friendly kill for the last kill. You don't see that very often uh, in a VRML match. Because these matches are uh, happening in comp lobbies, it's one of the uh, you know internal rules of the game that if you kill yourself as the last defender uh, it gives two points to the attackers because it stopped them from being able to cap so it's just one of those things you have to deal with and uh, you know sometimes with uh, explosive ordnance especially such dangerous ones like c4 it can be very easy to explode yourself uh, in the heat of a moment and that's what uh, it looks like we saw here that's uh it was an unfortunate unfortunate down that time around but you know it's really uh, cold steel was on objective i felt that um it's the individual that was on objective that i think it was stubbler had tablet out ready to go i mean that very well could have ended in a 2-0 anyways and i don't think the last defender was really on point so it was just or was not that weren't on point but they were off the objective quite a bit and i think there was enough time there where that very easily could have turned into a capital scenario um, Really smart play there from, I think that once again, I think it's Stubbler coming around that corner after Jerp had gone down towards the, you know, the bus stop, if you will, or the bus side, if you will, uh, being able to move in and quickly pop, pop, you know, capitalize on. Uh, one was a known of spot, which is where individuals hiding on the porch. It was, it's just really quick and execute. You know, very well practiced, maybe is the phrase for that. And that's what you kind of see on this uh, map like Suburbia. A lot of these quick, fluid actions, a lot of actions, uh, or a lot of uh, combat going down all at the same time, and these teams having to just react so quickly to all the possible moves that uh, the opposing team is making. Man. Well, I'll have to see what happens next. These teams are moving forward, and Hell From Above uh, already pushing forward very aggressively. Smoke coming out. From an M203 immediately, creating some distraction there. Shrieking Geek in position on the porch. Shots ringing out from the doctor. Ooh, and a trade from Jerp and shot in frame. Uh, creating an opening on the lane four here that Awesome Bob definitely could use to his advantage. Move forward and get quite a nice angle onto the lights of Nyx Dragon. Uh, sitting in that upper area and having to watch so many angles as he's sitting in that window. Uh, and it's twofold too. Not only does he have to watch angles going out, but he has to watch those angles coming back in as well. So he can't keep that constant eye out there on lane four. Um, I'd say that's that's wide open at this point for them to move in and at least up to where they could round that corner, which is a dangerous spot. Wookie just narrowly missing his shots onto Nynx. Nynx forced to pull back, but able to continue watching from his ankle and you're gonna have to deal with him at some point. Absolutely. But it should be. Wookie should have called him out, I would imagine, at that point as well. Um, so the other teammates should know to start looking that direction. But we'll see how they react to it. Doc9, meanwhile, continuing his push lane too. Able to get next to the house in a good position to maybe catch Doctor or Nynx if they uh, don't watch themselves. Just like that, Doc We're able to get that pickup on the Doctor. Sharp eyes looking into those uh, buildings and... That's actually one of the interesting uh, things about uh, night maps is that the interiors are usually a bit more lit up than the out uh, the uh, exteriors, 
giving the attackers a bit more of an edge. Exactly right. And even with night visions, it doesn't give you everything. Dalish must have spotted him out the corner of his eye, drops his tablet, runs to the inside line there. A narrow miss from Nyx on to Dalish as he now stands in the headlight of that APC. Suppressive fire here. Gray created an opening for Dalish to go for the Caps doubler, though. Doing his best to hold them back. Drinking Geek putting pressure on the Wookiee. And Doc9 able to get that pickup on the Wookiee. And now Dalish forced to pull back that, that life lost. Uh, and now Doc9, though, is in a tough position as well. Dalish, though, coming back in for another push in. He's on objective. He's got his up with Stubbler sitting there on the porch, able to quickly get that pickup. Awesome Bob. Not able to quite get that pickup or get that refrag either uh, as he's forced to stay back and not get picked from the likes of Ninx. It's a great defensive action there from Stubbler, denying that objective cap there. It would have been a cap back for a 2 2, but now they're going to have to battle it back forward to that objective. Nix doing a great job from up on top, Shrieking Geek, denying them on that northern or the eastern eastern side was, was very clutch, to keeping away from getting pinched situation for both teams there awesome able to get Ninx the kind of key player in stopping any of these uh, longer rotations Doc able to get that pick on the shrieking and Doc also grabbing Stubbler in a double giving help from above a point on the board a battle back from Doc come around I think Doc actually picked up four of the kills that round in total um, the last one to be picked up by Awesome, which I believe was Nix in the upstairs just good combo play by the last two staying composed going to where they knew that they were and taking them out one at a time, forcing Geek to rotate out so he can get the double for that finish to make it a 2-1. Definitely good moves from help from above on that attack. Cold Steel nearly had it, though. They had a great defensive triangle kind of defense. Subler on the objective and watching for that quick cap attempt. Uh, Ninx, or sorry, yeah, Ninx in the uh, second story window kind of just tying it all together in the back, watching for any of those rotations and quick movements onto either of his fellow Cold Steel players. And Geek sitting on the porch, able to catch anybody coming around the tank uh, and uh, creating pressure on Stubbler. Uh, but, you know, getting those quick picks can create such an opening for the offense and, and create a defensive situation where you see those rotations and you see those areas not being able to be watched just because you're missing players and uh, each player uh, having to pick up more angles and watch more areas and they just can't watch everything at once. You can't watch directly behind you <laughs> and, and also <laughs> watch towards objective. So some of those times uh, that's when Marsoc really starts to get the advantage uh, on Bull. Yeah, I agree. And I think there are the pyramid they had going on there was really strong, but it, it crumbled hard. Um, but I, I, I think that was just kind of the, you know, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes as it's going along and, and Hell really mounted a, a good offense there as well. But interestingly, we've seen the offense win two rounds in a row. Sometimes you just start to see those Marsoc trades. Honestly, those are uh, they're pretty interesting in my opinion. Uh, it's when you get those Volk trades and you know that the uh, tension's really rising, but when you see those Marsoc trades, uh, you know, both of the, all these teams are firing in all cylinders on these attacks. They're very, very coordinated, and uh, they're really fun to see. Long shots here from Dalish all the way down on lane <laughs> one, firing into Shrinking Geek. On a big grenade? That can't make it all the way. That's Got great close. throw. <laughs> That's a really great throw. That's really far. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doc Nice here. Oh, just nearly getting picked up by Jerp. Jerp just uh, on a roll here. Uh, getting a nice kill there, opening up quite uh, a path for his team to push forward uh, in lane four. Awesome Bob, gonna have to deal with quite a lot as Wookie's not really in a position to help until Jerp continues. Although if Jerp continues to push so aggressively, Wookie will have a shot in his window here. And just like that, he will be able to get that pickup. What an aggressive push from Jerp. He was he was feeling the magic uh, right there. That's what that was. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. You get that onward magic going. You think, yeah, I, I can take on the world. I got this. Here we go. And it works <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it does. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of the Cold Steel team here moving quite reserved up these different out or different approaches. 
quite well set up here, Doc. Uh, the Doctor, Nynx, and Shrieking in somewhat of a battle line with one flanker. Uh, kind of player on the side able to provide support as they push in. Shrieking Geek picking up Wookie there. Wow, I didn't think he would uh, expose through that window, but there, sure he did. Shrieking Geek able to get that pick up, and now nobody uh, in center house to catch any of those rotations uh, around the side there. Uh, especially fortuitous uh, for their player uh, all the way in the back in Subler. No, I think that that's a key loss right there, and we'll see that probably... Uh, have to be paid in full here by the end of the round. The center house for the garage objective is the key overlook backwards. Without that objective there, that's going to be really tough on Hell From Above to defend that objective. Oh, flash coming, but just a tad, uh, a tad short there. Shrieking probably not even going to see that he missed that, as he probably would be blinded himself. Dalish, though, just staying very, very tight in his angle, letting Shrieking push up here. Corner, Dalish getting that pickup, and Doctor coming around to try and get that refrag, and he might just get here. Dalish pushes out quite aggressively, and Doctor able to get that pickup, and now just up to Awesome Bob. You know, you don't ever hope to be the last one up, but on this objective right now, Awesome Bob couldn't be in a better spot. You cannot get to that objective without crossing Awesome Bob. That said, the offense is going to know that. They're going to probably know where you are. And if you sit in the best defensive spot, you're also predictable. One frag and you're dead. Agreed. But it won't be a cap. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, but it won't be a cap. But I, I agree with you. <laughs> How about this? I, I can see this happening from a, a team like Cold Steel. Flash onto Awesome Bob. Stubbler running past. Awesome Bob comes out, see no one's there, continues holding his line knowing that no one can get past him. Or can they? It would be it would be it would be gold. I, I hope it happens. It would be it would cinematic gold right there. And it would but, also uh, be a win for Cold Steel. It would be a huge win for Cold Steel. As as because for those of us playing onward the home game, um, when you do enter in the seven digit code that's randomly entered on everybody's tablet. Um, and they get close enough to the objective where they can enter that in. That is worth two points. Um, every map is played to four, as we saw kind of the first map on Subway. So it, it could happen. So, so this Very be well, flash. good. Yeah, what is Doctor doing here? Checking his tablet here. Awesome, going to be aware of this movement, but can't really look above him as he will expose to any player watching his position, uh, like a player like Nick's Dragon here. Oh, we got some utility coming oh, out. We Smoke got some coming utility. Out. Some. Uh, not quite on target there. Doctor just going to get that pickup and uh, assure themselves that they're at one point to a 3 1. I wanted to see the flash. I'm a little I bit wanted to see it. I wanted to see it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> he probably saw that the smoke wasn't on target and he's like, oh well, I guess I'll just get the kill then. <laughs> Well, and I'm surprised, maybe because it wasn't on target, he could still see it. That's why he didn't fire. Um, I guess it, it must have been just a hair too far. Disappointing. I expected more cold steel. I expected more. <laughs> you can't you can't knock them, though. They got that point. They're bringing this to a 3-1. This is definitely a tough situation for a hell from above to be in. Uh, cold steel in a defensive round only has to, uh, you know, kill them all. Kill them all, and then they're going to win this map, bring in this a series to a 1-1, uh, and bring it to a decider in map three. Uh, for a very, very exciting set of rounds here. Uh, both teams doing very well on their own map picks, uh, but we're going to have to see who can come out on top in map three when that happens. But you never know. You never know. Hell from above definitely uh, has this opportunity uh, to continue pushing forward. If they're able to get that kill, if they're able to get that cap, they'll be uh, a couple points closer to winning this map. So uh, you just gotta keep holding your breath, but uh, don't don't hold it too long <laughs> to see who comes out on top on this one. That's right. Cap ties it up. That's all we need. It's tough though uh, when you when you could just very well lose uh, if you try too hard for a cap. So. We're gonna have to see just how risky Health from Above likes to play here. As these are arguing out from Doctor. Uh, shooting, he can't get into the second player house. Link also putting some shots down range. 
really causes, causes some problems here. Jerp able to get uh, picked up by Shot and Frame as they push forward aggressively on lane four. Very, very aggressive defensive peak there. Uh, trying to just win it off early on picks, but not going to work his Minus way this time. Four. It's interesting. They do have four genuinely covered. So you got two people looking towards lane four, Doubler, and then Doctor's also cheating occasionally to the right, which is causing him a good look onto, onto lane four here. It looks like there's a smoke rolling out here. They're going to announce their presence as they're moving on forward at this two part. And it looks like it's a 3-2 split or maybe a 2-2-1-ish split. <laughs> Shrieking the, the house, peeks through the window there nearly uh, loses his life for it. Sometimes you just get, uh, you, you want it, you, you want it bad, but uh, it can't, it's not always worth it. <laughs> Do you think he shrieked? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe a little one. Maybe? All right, chat, you can admonish me for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that bad of one, I'll, I'll say that. But uh, anyways, <laughs> get out. Oh, man. <laughs> Doc9 here continuing his push up on the center house there. Making quite a bit of noise though. Uh, shouldering and unshouldering his weapon. Awesome Bob able to get a nice pickup in lane four as he pushed up there. Doc9 though going to continue pushing forward here. Gun at the ready. Ninx and Shrieking have to be aware of this as uh, he's made quite a bit of sound. Stubbler putting some shots on now. Doc9 though getting aggressive. Running up the stairs. Able to get that pickup on the Shrieking in that very aggressive down, movement. Down. And uh, hell from above in a great place here. Five up against two. If he had looked out the front door, just as soon as he took it, he could pick up Stubbler, and that's really what exposed that whole lane four to a cap, and they could push forward, because Nick's Dragon will be stuck out there in lane two. But he's gonna move back to the back of the house. He's gonna get stuck. Moving around behind, taking out Dalish. Not gonna be a in the right direction here as Wookie comes around the corner. Well, hello, says Wookie. Bullets to the face. Will end that altercation soundly and help for Bub's favor, bringing this to uh, a cool 3-2. Get another Marsoc win here. Um, all of them here on Suburbia, we're seeing just Marsoc win after Marsoc win, which has been some awesome pushes from both teams here, moving it on forward. And really, it's a pretty balanced kill sheet across the board, maybe with the only notable exception being Doc9 on Health from Above, Health from above with six kills. doing well very well for themselves and yeah like you said the uh kind of trend of barsock wins has been uh, an interesting one i think both of these teams do very well on their attacks they uh know what to do and how to work so well together and that's uh that's really when you see that teamwork uh you know pushing through the entrenched positions of uh both teams defense especially on a map like suburbia uh, that usually has or has a couple objectives that are very tight and easily defendable uh, like center house or the the spawn house in the south like we were seeing just previously they agree and I, I really love the support that they're doing on the you know the battle buddy system if you will and while like for instance dalish is taken out um wookie uh, Wookie Oreo actually turned back around and re, you know, re brought back that kill in order to really lock that last defender down. Um, it's been happening on both sides across the board. Really a lot of support happening there, making for some very interesting gameplay. This one is uh, actually one of the most uh, scary objectives, I would argue. Uh, this is the one where you can see those smoking caps come in full force. Uh, Cold Steel definitely in a good position. Uh, to be able to enact that we're just gonna have to see what kind of strategy they go for as we uh, move into the next round here Absolutely agree. And it's and it's a it could be a big one for cold steel They know that the winds on the line help from above also knows that they have to hold this line Otherwise, they're on to the next map, but they could you know, they can close it out by disrupting these marks off win rounds But who will take it? Who knows? Could be either. We could see a tie. Yeah. Let's go. That's not a thing, actually. One of one of them has to win. <laughs> there will be one winner. That's right. The other will make it off the island. This is my tank. So it'll be interesting to see if we see another like line hole. Freaking picking up one early from that upstairs window there. 
Um, it's, I think that's what they're looking for is like that early pick, if you will. Someone moved up a bit too hard. Dalish might go back into the same spot, giving Shrieking Geek a second <laughs> shot here. Yeah, I have one kill on Humvee. This is Just what called Shrieking out the Geek kill. needs here. Doesn't look like Dalish is going to quite take the bait, though. Chirp moving up quite aggressively here, nearly in the sight of Doc if it wasn't for all these hedges. We're just going to have to Dalish. see what he chooses to do. This is a very dangerous situation. That said, Dalish putting some shots down range towards the likes of Shrieking Geek. Not quite able to get on target. And that said, we have smoke on objective. Dalish now forced to push or look back towards objective as the best line to catch any uh, attackers running towards it from lane four, lane three area. But at the same time, uh, doing down one player, he's going to have to watch both angles. Chirp and Shriek pushing up quite aggressively here. And each time he shoots, he gives his position away just a little bit more clearly for these attackers to exploit using some utility or just getting a nice flank on. Chirp, though, not quite able to get him in... These players don't know it, but they're super exposed to one another if it wasn't for this uh, mission cover and defense. On the cover of Night makes this extra difficult as well. Nailish finally picking up Jerp, walking forward there along that line. Great shot. Nyx is going to come up. Shrieking Geek has to know that he's there. He's completely pinned down behind this little, uh, what is it, sandbag? Square sandbag? But... Oh, and Dalish peeks once again around that corner. Shriek and Geek finally picking him up. Dalish having a heck of a run over there in that corner, picking up two before finally going down there. Bringing the numbers here. We got a 3-3 match going on. Hey, hey, Kesney. We got yeah. shot in frame. Sneaking up behind in the playground. Made a nice push across the open area of lane four. Getting in, uh, in and behind Stubbler and Doctor. He's in a great place. He's going to hear this movement through here, but will he shoot? through the hedges or will he go for a bit more of a safe play where you can get vision on this uh on his attackers here in stubbler and doctor we're just gonna have to wait and see i think it's a key moment for shot and frame here and i think if he does get behind it could be devastating if he comes out in front he turns it almost into a 50 50 exchange doc gets doctor Doctor, Do doctor on Doctor Violence. We can't condone it, but it happens. Shrieking Geek, though, getting the refrag onto Doc 9. Shot in frame, though. Now it's down to two. Hearing this uh, talking right on the other side, able to get that pickup <laughs> through the through the fence there. <laughs> and, uh, coming around the side here, knowing that he heard movement from before, but that player already dead. Uh, now he's just going to have to deal with this. They uh, were the only two alive. I last just got attacker. Minus one. And Shrieking That's Geek. It. So unfortunately, Shrieking Geek's really on the wrong side of the street. I mean, right now, all of their attackers are on Shrieking Geek's side. He needs to really be on the other side of the street and get across, and that's a big street to cross. Though, Definitely it does not ass. look like... It, it doesn't look like Wookie Oreo is watching that direction. He's He is pretty objective-focused at the moment, although he is taking a peek now. That's a long way to see at night. Shrieking, though. He's making the move. Wookie... Catches that movement there. Probably calling it in right now, but Shrieking got on target. Just nearly missing it. Making it to the next cover. Oh, and getting picked oh. by Wookie. Just barely grabbing his head there. What a shot. That was like, that was a long shot. Wow. It sure was. I, they broke it, though. <laughs> all that uh, tactical. Yeah, all that tactical jumping or movement, bounding movement, I should say, uh, from Shrieking nearly worked out in his favor there. Nearly got in and behind the house, and that's really what he needed uh, to get that win, to get the in a good position, to get those picks. Uh, but help from above in their excellent defense, excellent flank as well. Uh, we'll be able to tie this to a 3-3. Do you have any thoughts on that last round, Kesney? A lot happened. Yeah. There was a ton, so there was a lot of key holds, so I think the takedown on Doc 9 happening in the middle made it to where the flank and him not going around the back made that critical because he was in a key place at that point to deny the lane 4 um, whenever he was just hanging out there right by the hedges. But the patience between both these teams, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. You have Geek that was hanging out in the upstairs and just waiting for someone to walk out behind APC, picks up that early kill, um, and then on the hedges. So their patience, I think, is playing off. 
and it's going to be interesting. Now we're going into a 3-3 game here. It's either team's game. Either one can win it. They just have to kill everybody. <laughs> everybody <laughs> has to die. And here we go. The teams are moving forward here. Shots ringing out already. Dalish nearly catching his players. In lane one, very close positions. Almost looked like they were both trying to go for the same one, but maybe Jerp trying to get quite aggressive as we have seen that. Smoke's already coming out, blocking two of these players from being able to see past uh, lane one effectively. Uh, only able to catch those kind of uh, flanking movements uh, around the side that Dalish is currently making. Currently going into the lines, into the jaws of Jerp as uh, he's got his laser on target. I think Jerp's new theme song. Jer, 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 jer. <laughs> oh man. Check out this position uh, in Nyx Dragon. Prone under the red bar here. Uh, trying to catch anybody that comes around on either side. You can't really see under the car, but it is a good position to get a sneak attack, that is for sure. I miss him. Well, he's in an immediate position to defend the defense of the cap, and then comes down to it at the end of the day. Yo, a cap wins the game too. You alive? Nope. Are you alive? Dirk's definitely one. Nope. <laughs> Matter of fact. Got some uh, a flash coming up from Shaking Geek. He's gonna try and get a pick here, but Awesome Bob in a very strong angle here. He's got total cover, only his head and gun are picking over the top, but that's gonna have to wait. His Nyx Dragon here is just having to deal with so much shot and frame. Doc 9 uh, and Wookie all in a great position. They're forcing these players to fight for their lives. You can just see Nyx Dragon here spraying across the, the field there with his gun, just trying to hold him back. Davis getting in position to get a, a rotation on the, doc, the doctor. And if the do doctor is not careful, he's going to get shot in the side there. It looks like they're doing a rotation. Shot and frame and Wookie Oreo coming around. Wookie's in the watch where Doc shoots from. It looks like Doc was finally picked up by the Dalish and Doc 9. Pick him up, shut that down. Now we just have Stubbs and Nick really on objective protecting it here. We could see a big push from lane 4. <laughs> Uh, a little bit smaller now uh, is a pickup from Nyx Dragon, able to push, uh, stop that push from Oreo. Shot and frame is going to think twice about his movement there. Awesome Bob, one shot, one kill on the Tree King. Uh, Flash coming in, hitting Nyx Dragon, but going to be hard to really use that to their advantage as Stubbler's in a great spot to stop them, and just pushing through that smoke is going to be very, very deadly for these attackers. Nix, if he decides to blind fire back into that hedge like he's been doing a bit, he'll actually pick up Awesome Bob there, who's going to be getting up and moving away, and so it's no longer valuable. But watching and kind of has his head on a swivel here. If Doc9 were to get Stubbler, uh, Nix wouldn't be too far to follow because he'd have to do a 180 to turn around and try to recap that. Ooh, nice pickup from Doc9. Look at that pickup coming around the corner. He's able to pick up Stubbler as well. Help from above are going to take this map and in, in, in turn will be able to take the series. Well, it's a clutch play from Doc9 coming around that corner and it was just, um, it was just, you, you had too many angles that you were trying to defend all at once at the end there and um, that's that old onward tradition. You look the wrong way and that's where they're coming from. Very, very true. A tough uh, series for Cold Steel, and they really gave their all there, bringing this to a 3-3 three, three, uh, in the end there, doing their best to just hold on, and it was a very valiant defense. They were actually pulling them back. A lot of that pre-fire coming across the street there in the do or do in Doctor, uh, and they were just working so well together, forcing them to rotate here and there, and then picking up those, uh, those uh, flankers from uh, help from above as they came through lane four, but it just wasn't enough as help from above were able to just get those angles to get those picks onto those players as they were just forced to go into a tighter and tighter box and just weren't be able to, you know, watch all the angles at the same time. It's just a game of angles and, and areas you're going to have to watch. And if you can't watch them, that's where the enemy's probably going to come. These, these teams are just attuned to that. They know where these openings are coming from as they get those picks. Uh, to the best of their ability, of course, with the fog of war. But, you know, we saw that from Hell from Above. We saw that from Cold Steel in previous rounds. 
you know, these two teams, I think, uh, especially uh, on the attack, have just been doing so beautifully uh, well, and they've worked so well together. Absolutely, and a nail biter down to the end, and I think probably a key play for them there was that rotation at the end that put them out onto lane four. Um, I thought that pick might stop them, might slow them down, but they continued forward, pushed just a little bit farther. You know, ultimately, a, you know, stealing back the series, if you will. I mean, it, you know, what three rounds ago we were sitting at one three, Cold Steel about to you know take it away, and uh, and it looks like it you know got taken and. Al from above went and they they carried that off into uh, into the final to win the series. We're gonna jump into a quick intermission, guys. Uh, we will be back very very shortly with the last map here. Just jumping into a custom, so stay tuned, uh, and uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to be jumping into round three or map three here on uh, the new custom shipyard by Kois. This is the uh, quite linear custom map. We got a lot of high ground as well. These teams are going to have to deal about uh, deal with players up both high and low. You got a ship to flank on. You got these open lanes in the south. There's quite a lot going on in this map, and we're going to have to see how these teams handle it. Jerp pushing forward quite aggressively, able to grab a corner, but Doc Knight was ready, able to get that pickup, and also grabbing a pick onto Nynx uh, for a quick two pickup onto Cold Steel, and Hell from above will be able to exploit that. Two players pushing forward down the ship there, Stubbler, and this kind of cheeky uh, mid uh, mid spot here on these containers will be able to get that pickup. Wookie trying to uh, get the refrag, but Stubbler pushing and looking a different direction. It was a you know, quick pickup, and then he's kind of just buried himself back into cover here, making Wookie come forward to him, which I think was really smart of him. Uh, and at this point, Wookie now has to consider he might be anywhere along that line. He has to either choose a different line. Doc may have seen him up there. Ooh, Dalish getting very close to objective, but giving himself away with that smoke. And under the watchful live shrieking, will get taken out. Doctor rotating back on the objective, noticing just a little bit of a gap there. Uh, but that hole has been filled and now Hell from above are in a tough spot. They got these defensive players in great positions to defend the objective and uh, having to deal from uh, not being able to really do anything about it as Stubbler is so tight on this objective and if he doesn't look towards that center uh, building, he can't be shot from it. I 
think Stubler's is, it's a one directional. Well now, definitely a one directional avenue as he tried to come back down and Wookie took care of that. Wookie coming around the corner there, shrieking, getting that repick. Doc9 and Awesome Bob though, pretty far back from objective and it's gonna be tough for them to really push forward here. But that said, they got four minutes. If they can get a pick up on the Doctor or Shrieking, it would work really well for him. But in the uh, kind of reverse for that, when Shrieking Geek getting that excellent pickup in that center building, uh, upper area, brings this up to a 2v1. Yeah, he's picked up three now in that building. It's a deadly house for him. He's been, he's been a mini sniper up there in that corner. Speaking of sniping, awesome Bob with his four time scope. They're sitting on the corner of this building, prone and ready for any kind of rotation from Shrieking, which actually does happen, but he wasn't in position to, to see it, and probably going to be pretty sad if he watches the cast to see wow. that he narrowly missed it. That was the moment. That's what you wait for. But, uh, yeah. I mean, it, is, it does happen really fast. When you're zoomed in on that scope, I mean, you can't see a lot, and especially from that distance. Um, that's over as soon as it starts. So he'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. Oh, he might actually get a pick up here. Oh, gets shot himself. Able to get that heel off and uh, move in and rotate without getting shot. Moving onto the boat, but uh, actually not a bad position as Doctor was forced to move back towards the objective and Stubbler was taken out earlier in the round. Uh, coming for the boat, I think is going to be the right play here as he will be able to use this high ground to his advantage, attack where he wants, maybe even pick up a little utility from these bodies okay, along the way. At least a syringe. Yeah. Gotta have one of those handy. Well, if he gets shot again, you're probably dead. That's typically how it works. But you never know. It <laughs> right? might need that. Right? <laughs> but I, I mean, you just we learned want the nothing. Drugs. That's, you know, I, uh, I do something when I'm running across the open. You put a syringe and you have it ready to go. I call it junkie running. And, uh, wow. It's. It, <laughs> If you get shot, you might get one more bullet. <laughs> it doesn't actually I... heal you, Kesney. It just stops the bleeding. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of adrenaline before you go, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, what I mean, uh, jokes aside, uh, you know, if you get hit as you run, uh, you will start walking while you're in the middle of the open. And maybe if you can duck around corner, get that quick heal. You could continue pushing forward with a full movement available to you, maybe when they don't really expect such a uh, aggressively fast movement as you already had the uh, drugs in hand. But yeah. not going to see that here as Awesome Bob going to use this full time to his advantage. He's going to push forward, going to get a little bit lower to maybe stop himself from being seen from the, the lights of Shrieking Geek as he continues to push up here. And if he can just go a little bit faster, he will be able to get up on the back, the uh, northeast side of this boat, which has this uh, kind of really high ground that would be an excellent place to get a pickup from. It, it will be hard under the time constraint as he's fallen under a minute now, and Doctor is also watching that pretty heavily um, up here, kind of watching over watching that it, leverage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's it. So, and they've got it identified at least that he's probably coming from the boat. It looks like by the lasers. But Awesome Bob could easily pull this out. I mean, Shrieking's a little far away from objective. Um, if he could pull out Doctor, I mean, there's not, it's not impossible to think he could get there and enter the code. Definitely isn't, but he's running out of time. You can see he's made this rotation up onto the building, but might be just a little too late here. He'd have to get the double pickup, and if they don't expose themselves, it's going to be game over for him. gonna fall that's what i would do he's on the ship and the call does come out from position. doctor yeah no yeah. no -uh, no -uh. oh man come on now <laughs> <laughs> i'll just let them commentate themselves <laughs> better, did a better job than we would have in that moment <laughs> oh I forgot I didn't get to change the map yet let me fix that right quick there uh sub or not subway but we're on shipyard shipyard the S's it's the it's just the series of S's it's 
the S series, even with the <laughs> score. Score Subway Suburbia Shipyard. It's all S's. <laughs> uh, well then, that round, uh, a brutal round uh, for help from above. Cold Steel just doing so well on their defenses and even with two players up, not overly rotating, not exposing themselves to like of Awesome Bob, keeping him hemmed in on the boat and you know, having to go slow just to get past their lines of defense left him no time to really push onto objective or uh, put a, his mark on the battlefield. Uh, even if he was able to pick up, uh, you know, uh, Doctor, it wouldn't have been enough uh, to stop uh, Shrieking Geek to just wait out the timer. Uh, and speaking of Shrieking Geek, there are three kills doing quite well for himself. Yeah, devastating from up in that kind of overwatch position in that white building looking towards the ship. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we see that same position as it tends to be a common one for Shipyard, um, who they put up there and how they respond. Yeah, there's definitely those kind of power positions. This is a map of power defensive positions. Even for attack, these second story areas can be so powerful uh, for either side to really just get those uh, those picks, but at the same time exposing them to the fire of the opposite team if they are ready for that kind of movement. Absolutely. It's uh, this especially with that middle building will be key, and to see what they do with that. It looks like Shrieking Geek is going to start high, watching out, maybe trying to get an early pick on anybody going up into that area. Not in frame okay. here, in a good position to catch anybody coming down this ramp. Not go oh, they're coming around the corner here. Doctor and Stubble are coming around. Sean Frame ringing out, getting two, two quick pickups on the side there. Uh, Nynx as well being picked up from a, a sharp shot from an SKS across the map there uh, as he got into the roof. And Cold Steel immediately down the roof. Wookie's going to pick up another one here, and he actually sees the final. He could pick up the third here and shut this round down. Very well, good. Reload, reload, reload. What are you thinking right now if you're the last member of Cold Steel? It's a lot of bullets. I think you're not thinking anything. I think you're blissfully <laughs> on the floor right now. <laughs> that was, it's, was a uh, lot of bullets that. that way. Didn't quite have time to show this. Is uh, Everything was just happening so aggressively. Wukio, clutch sniping from the back, excellent ambush position uh, from the front as well. Uh, just doing so well to really uh, stop that aggression and bring this to a 1-1. Uh, help from above just saying that uh, they, they, got, they got something. They got the plans as well and uh, they're willing to execute them to, to bring this to the 1-1 as we see here. And Cold Steel definitely caught out by that one, but I think they'll be ready for any of those kind of sneaky push-ups. Uh, in the future from the likes of Hell from, from, uh, Hell from Above. Agreed. And I think, you know, it's kind of been a game of opposites even as we've gone along between the two teams and they've been really evenly matched. And so Shriek and Geek having some great long shots. Wookie Oreo, I think, picked up just as many um, in a different spot. So they're both playing even in different spots but playing to the same strengths, which has been uh, phenomenal to watch. Right. Yeah, this map is just interesting. I have to... Maybe it's just that I, I haven't played as much, but man, getting up on that box here uh, and shooting down on those players coming down the ramp was very, very effective. This train, by the way, I just want to say, very pretty. <laughs> he's, he's even got the sound going along with it. It just looks so good. Kind of reminds me of BART. It's a little kind of muni train in San Francisco. Dalish taking some shots from the top of the ramp, but he's in a danger spot. Nick's able to get double from around the side here. Smoke coming out. Dalish coming out the corner. Doctor able to get that pickup. Shrieking Bob also going down. Doc 9 getting the refrag onto Nix here as this tense combat happens in the south at the same time as the push happened on the boat. Uh, hell from above. Uh, looking a little skinny there. One player up. Yeah, it was, well, I think Shrieking Geek wasn't confirmed, you know, and he couldn't over the top of that ledge there and gave away pivotal information, turning over the last individual there so that Cold Steel could take away that win. 
Wow. I, I normally <laughs> don't see such aggressive combats happen in the south there. It's actually a really tough place to push forward on, uh, as players can be uh, prone and look under these cargo trucks, uh, as well as the semi-truck, uh, in several other really good defensive positions. And it's just something you have to deal with on this map, is it's very tough to push forward. And if you continue to push forward without checking all those spots, uh, at some point you are going to pay for it. But uh, yeah, the speed that they're pushing forward, that makes it difficult. And you can do a sweep, but um, yeah, as you saw, even with some of the doubles, I mean, it's it's hard to slow that down. For sure. They didn't even get close on the boat there. Uh, this uh, objective is actually very hard to defend. There's so many approaches in these cargo boxes for the attackers to really come in and, and create a lot of confusion for the defenders. But uh, opting to p uh, play a bit more of a pushed out defense, force them to fight out in the open, uh, can work really well for a defending team. Uh, we're going to have to see if Hell from Above will emulate that or if they will play uh, more close to the chest uh, and let Cold Steel get a little bit closer. Looks like uh, you got shot in frame coming out here to guard the stop ramp. It'd be similar to where I think it was Doc played last round, um, but given that they didn't move as fast across that ramp, shot in frame taking a couple of shots here off of the, we'll call it the, the westernmost ramp. Smoke coming out over the top, giving away. Shot in frame going to come up to the edge here and is now watching along, but he may have made some noise which caused Stumbler and Jerp. Now they may be looking back towards the back of the boat here coming up, but they're going to have to deal with Dalish and Shot in frame here on this. Uh, we may see another double. Yep. Zero over. The double comes over. But it's not confirmed, so they're going to be able to tell everybody about it. Shots ringing out from Wookie. Two players up this upper area, uh, getting punished by some shots from Doctor there, but Doctor quickly able to get the refrag and uh, the uh, revive able to come out as well if they so desire. And Nyx is going to have his work cut out here for him on the opposite side as far as what he will see up in the awesome mob until Nyx ended it for him. Um, it's only going to be the ahead. Crane, on the blue crane. Cog left, I got your right. A good call out from Doc9 here, giving Awesome Bob the direction he needs to really push forward and support his lines as well. Dalish, meanwhile, ramp, getting ramp. a good uh, secondary kind of flanking position, knowing that there's only one or two gold steel left. Uh, it, but that said, she can keep, keep able to pick up Doc9. Dalish will know his location, gets up on the high ground looking down. Can't see him yet, but we'll be able to catch him when he moves out. Awesome Bob as well, getting quite antsy here as he pushes forward. Shrieking Geek just hiding under this ramp here, letting the defense, you know, come and be, you know, be antsy, giving him the opportunity to get some one-on-one uh, -on -one pickups instead of having to uh, defeat the whole team at once. A revive comes up for Wookie Oreo, who was actually in a fantastic job and should have been making callouts all along, and I imagine was telling him where Shrieking Geek was. We now have a 4v2 scenario here. Actually, and, a 4v1. Oh, is it a 4v1? Oh, yeah, they have a Oh. A tough one. A tough one to have a drop on that. Picture. Yeah, that's uh, not the moment you want that for, but it's going to bring it to a 2v2 there. What do you think? Uh, a tough one <laughs> for both of these teams here. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, these more aggressive defenses can work really well. And we saw that from Hell from Above, that two-man push uh, towards the uh, front of the ship worked so very well for them. They were able to get around the backside uh, and have one come over the top, as we've been seeing uh, earlier in this series. Uh, just so devastating. I mean, you have to watch... 180 degrees, you know, from a, a person coming straight down the side uh, on your on your left and as well on your right. There's just not much you can do. Quickly becomes kind of a sensory overload kind of a scenario too, and your ears are going to tell you one thing, your brain's going to be telling you something else, and then you're going to see something, and it's just like a passing leaf, and all of a sudden, you know, all of that divides by zero and it resets all over again. You're losing track of what it was you're holding on to. I think pushing out in that particular scenario was the right call because it gives you three points to defend instead of the entirety of the boat with all its angles 
but I think it's a trade out there, and you've got to be aware and be able to move back in the scenario where they do make it across or they make it somewhere that you didn't plan for. Right, it's just kind of a, a question of rotations at that point, but not having to make it there is it just works so beautifully from them. Cold Steel weren't really able to stop it. Is that push uh, a very hard one to deal with help from above uh, as they pushed up there? Really couldn't be countered uh, until they got into position, uh, just based on the timing. Agreed. Uh, now, the center building in this objective here, so we're in the brick building here all the way on the west. Uh, on the west, that's correct. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this center building will be the fighting point for both sides as it is the higher end of the objective. One down in my room, one down. The aggressive defensive push that, from Cold door. Steel immediately shut door. down from help from above, ready for any kind of move like that. Uh, it's just tough. That center position is just so strong, but Jerp doing his best to bring it back, able to get that pickup onto Dock 9. Uh, and bring this, bringing this totally back to a uh, 3v3, and just like that, we're going to do it now. Geek picked up in the center building by Awesome Bob. Uh, and now Jerp uh, and Doctor are going to have to do their best to defense against this team that has the middle high ground and a great position to catch any of those uh, peaks from the like of Doctor uh, in Dalish. He did fire, which gave Dalish the heads up that he was over there. Dalish quickly turned and took that out to shut that down and giving the health from above. The number three here going in and making that a 3-2. What a tough one. Uh, what, what did you think of that uh, offensive push from Cold Steel? So I thought that the flank could have been really, really powerful. The problem was at the end, um, Awesome actually heard Shrieking Geek. He was looking back at Shrieking Geek's direction before he came up that ramp. He knew he was there. Something, some noise, something tipped him off. And he was watching that direction actively. Now, it did pull away his attention for a half a moment. So there was maybe an outside chance that Shrieking could have pulled the old onward you're looking the wrong way maneuver but it didn't work out in his scenario there for that so I think that it could have been really really solid but it needed to slow down just a touch but that center building is the key building really for that objective if you control that you control the whole map as we saw in the end there whenever Dalish heard some gunfire quick turn Pam and the round was over so I think uh, Health from Above played it exactly right. Um, Cold Steel had a great idea. The ball just didn't roll their way on that one. Uh, and I think, you know, maybe uh, 5 out of 10 would have gone easily the other direction. But I think the angle definitely there was to Awesome's advantage because he happened to be in the spot to hear him. Right. I'm actually, the way I see this objective is a bit more of a, a conservative defense position. You got this open ground that the attackers have to come from. Uh, and expose themselves on and if you play uh you know to the strengths of this building you can not expose yourself to that very strong middle ground as you kind of detailed earlier uh that said you do open yourself up to kind of an aggressive push uh with smokes and utility when you do that but that's just kind of the price you pay uh when you do play a more conservative defense and old steel uh more of a team to uh, live life on the edge there try and catch hell from above uh, as they're pushing up and, and pick them off it just didn't go their way uh, as we saw earlier and we are at a 3-2 scenario here and in last map we actually saw a team convert this so I think you know, it is not out of the question to see that Cold Steel can push in um, we have an exciting you know, couple of rounds probably ahead of us here let's see what happens Definitely so. The push is on. These teams are moving forward. Uh, the team, the defenders in Hell from Above have all taken their spots, all holding uh, set here. Rookie in a very tight angle here, just shooting around the box here, nearly catching Shrieking Geek as he pushes up there, uh, but not quite able to get him as the boat is a bit in his way there. Still in a great position to stop any kind of rotation uh, from the Cold Steel, uh, but also... And as they know there's location, a good frag might be all it needs to take him out. Got real excited there. I didn't realize that was a flash coming out there towards the key I thought that frag was on track. Next Dragon able to get Wookie as he just peeks out just a little bit aggressively uh, as he tries to get that picks onto Jerp. The teamwork from Jerp and Next Dragon coming to 
position. Doc able to pick up Nyx. Doc also getting Jerp and Jerp getting the trade back onto Doc. Uh, Doc though able to be revived and actually in a great place to give uh, just callouts. Yeah, I agree. I think his vision will be somewhat limited in the house that he's in, but he should be able to at least see that one approach coming through there. Um, and, but that still, you know, is a great spot if you have to be downed and not taken. Oh, and there's the revive there running up from shot and frame. Great work. The doctor is continuing his push forward, though. Shrieking Geek and Stubbler have made it across the street. This is what you need for an attack to work. Doctor in a great position to get a shot onto, the, onto their back. Shrieking Geek taken out by the likes of Dalish around the corner here and shot. Actually, really, really quite close to Doctor here. Doctor able to get that pickup as he runs around the corner here. While he might be alone. Oh, Austin Ball is able to get that pickup though as he came around the corner there. And hell from above will take this one. Winning the series 3 0. Really a great, that was a great final there, push in from hell from above. I mean, it felt like, um, you know, and that their defense on that final there, Cold Steel going into it, it felt like they were still constructing some of the thoughts of what they wanted to do. And I think they put, so like for instance, shot from a shot in the dark shot. Um, Dave just ran away from me. Um, but anyhow, he went up on top there. He was overlooking the top moving uh, and kind of trying to deny that middle building, but he kind of gave up on it pretty early and moved somewhere else. He did eventually pull in that revive there on it, uh, but really Cold Steel, I felt, did very, very good tactical plays across the board. Um, they did a couple, you know, just especially, you know, as we're moving across there and taking some early leads, I, I think that it was a fantastic match all the way across the board. I mean, any highlights stand out to you in particular, Mono? Uh, several good ones. I did like that uh, C4 play we actually saw in the highlight reel a little bit earlier here. Uh, able to get that double and then uh, really swinging it uh, in their favor. That's just the power of C4. A lot of good movements as well just from both of these teams. Uh, I think, you know, kind of as you pointed out in the past too, we've just seen kind of a pattern of excellent attacks from both of these teams as they push up really well together. The aggression uh, just the right amount uh, to counter both of these teams and their defensive styles and uh, neither of these teams uh, really especially in the first two maps were really able to stop one another as they came around <laughs> and towards those objectives and uh, as we pushed on to shipyard we saw some really really spicy plays uh, just some wonderful defensive uh, strategies where they're able to push up very aggressively towards the center of the map but make it work pretty much every time uh it's just so hard to counter uh these choke points that uh, these teams are gonna have to deal with is it's just something you're gonna have to learn to do and i think you're gonna have to see uh, a lot of utility use um a lot of very uh kind of counter angles uh we saw even a little bit of that as they tried to counter uh the push down that kind of like center box area uh while shooting around the left side uh of the um jump back here in the scoreboard really quick uh just kind of trying to shoot through the crack and between the boat but just not quite able to get it it's just such a tough angle to come up this boat um so as we go throughout this series uh shipyard being a very very brand new map to the vrml pool just uh, coming in here replacing uh basically replacing USS Quest, at least as a custom map. Um, it's actually replacing the Czar as a medium range map. Um, but these customs really shake up the meta. Uh, we're going to have to see these new, entirely new strategies come from these teams. Do you have any thoughts, especially on the state of customs and what that kind of brings to the VRML? I think customs are amazing. There's We have so many very gifted custom map makers. And really with their tenured experience within the platform itself, um, really they're they're passionately creating these maps. And this one here would be almost a key example of it. It's not just that it's wide and full of angles, similar to like a bazaar or something of that nature, but it's tall. And so everybody has to also get used to this new thing called looking up. And most of our maps <laughs> historically have been fairly linear. Um, the most vertical one in that one really being probably like a dust if you will or something of that nature and even that's not that linear or not that excuse me doesn't have that much of a vertical climb to it 
Um, but they're long shots today, and I mean, we got to see a couple of them, uh, especially from Wookie Oreo, when he, you know, picked up the three on top of the roof with the long shots. I mean, it's a, it's it's exciting to watch the game transform and modernize as the tactics evolve along with it. Absolutely, Kesney. Good words there. Uh, good insights. I mean, <laughs> I really mean to say they're uh, very true. And uh, we're going to see a change as well in the uh, third part of the season as well. We'll just have to wait and see what that brings. But uh, this has been Hell from Above versus Cold Steel, brought to you by Menorkid and Kesney. We'd like to thank the VR Master League for providing this format, the moderating team, the sponsors, especially you guys. Thanks for uh, sticking along there, uh, watching this gameplay with us. Very, very fun to see these two teams duke it out, and I'm sure uh, maybe later in the season, maybe next season, we'll see these te teams uh, with a nice rematch uh, and see what they can do with some new strategies and new custom maps maybe even as well uh, in the next season. Uh, but until then, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Please do tune in for any of the matches that we will see uh, later in the week. Probably going to be some nice spicy ones happening on the weekend. But uh, this is uh, this has been good. This is Mud Mono with my co-caster Kesney. Have a good night. <laughs>